Yeah. And I think people aren't driving them as daily day cars anymore. So as a weekend car, if it rains a little bit or a little bit of water leaks and things like that, you know, and wind noise is bad, it doesn't matter. Well, welcome to a new Dave's Workshop Tours video. This time I'm at Waldmeister in Melbourne South. Their particular specialism is Porsches. So let's go inside and see what they've got. The company was set up in the early 90s by Ben Fargeter and specialises in both air and liquid cooled Porsches from 1965 onwards. Though Ben has moved on from the day-to-day -day running of the business, he remains in a consultancy role and carries out all the engine rebuilds that comes the company's way. OK, Ben, thanks for having us in today. Tell us a little bit about the setup you've got. Oh, well, we've been around for since 93, so around for a while, just doing Porsches. Everything from normal servicing to race preparation, restoration, um, modifications. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything you can imagine. Great stuff. All right, yeah. well, you want to show us about what have you yeah, got yeah. there? Come and have a look. Um, so it varies every single day from early 71 model, another 71 model. This is 87, 3.2 Carrera. This is just, um, we're actually having a lot of this sort of stuff at the moment where cars haven't been driven for a long period of time. Um, and I think over COVID, people have re-evaluated their lives and got the, dragged the car out that's been sitting. So this one's been sitting for uh, seven or eight years. And um, yeah, the owner's decides about time he gets it out and uh, enjoy makes it, it safe hey? and, yeah, and enjoys it. So it's here for just, again, going through the the normal fluids, probably tyres, um, and a few other just individual things that he's asked for. It's not been put in a barn in that time, has it? Uh, no. <laughs> no, it looks very, very well kept. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You seem to have a few targets around. Is it popular in Australia, was it? Or? Uh, look, they haven't actually. They've been um, not, not shied away from, but they certainly weren't flavour of the month really almost until recently when the 991 Targa came back out and they reintroduced this sort of Targa top. Yeah. Particularly with the silver bar, wasn't the it? The silver yeah. bar, that's right. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's sort of, I think it's suddenly brought this, this focus to them and a recognition and you know, they're a little bit different. There weren't too many of them, so people, yeah, people fall in love with them again. And I think people aren't driving them as daily day cars anymore. So as a weekend car, if it rains a little bit or a little bit of water leaks and things like that, you know, and wind noise is bad, it doesn't matter. Yeah, people okay. are less, less worried. And next to it, we've got a, uh, something a bit special there as well. Um, yes, oh. yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it is. It's they're old, it's silver, silver, it's a Porsche. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's quite, I mean, really what you see is what you get with this one. Um, it's, can move in a little bit closer so I can It's move. been sold uh, more recently and it's... It's just a sort of a good, straight, honest car. It is what it is. So it hasn't been restored. Um, it's, uh, it doesn't necessarily need restoring, but, but you know, some people like to just drive them as they are. So it's so so original leather and everything in there? Yeah, original leather. Yeah, yeah. Mechanical fuel injected car. Yeah, so it's a lovely little car. What's the uh, current Top Gun Porsche? There's a silver early 70s. I haven't seen no, it. You haven't seen it? <laughs> no, no. It's, it's the only car of note in, in the latest uh, Top Gun I haven't film, seen and it. It's, uh, and I can't think what model it is, but it looks... So where would the E stand in the procession of Porsche cars in, 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 in the, um, oh, the, at the, the time? Um, so the, the S was the, the, fast, the fast model, if you like, and then there was the E, um, and then there was a T and an L. But the E's probably... They're just really lovely drivable. Slightly smaller camshafts, slightly less power, same torque, but just a really lovely car. Yeah. I'm sorry, is this 2.4 or 7? Uh, this one's a 2.2. Oh, 2. Yeah, right. so this is an earlier one, slightly oh. earlier. What, so yeah. what year would you like? 70, 71, 72. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. And how, have, over the years, I would imagine people have been tempted to upgrade engines on uh, from the 2.2. <laughs> so, so, so when the cars are newer, or certainly 70s, 80s, 90s, we did a lot of, um, well the world did a lot of upgrading, so the cars were changed from what they were, whether it be suspension, the look of the cars, body, engines, and really in the last oh, 
probably 10 years or so, there's been a real push back to standard. So all the modifications that we've done, we're, we're actually reversing now and um, taking a lot of them back to factory standard. Yeah. And is that a fair part, part of the business? Um, um, yes, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's another early one here, which is a left-hand drive American car. And that's Let's try and have a look over there. Being slowly being brought back to some sort so of So this is it's been imported recently? Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure when it was imported, but it certainly sat still for a long time, so it needs a fair bit of work to bring it back to rest, you know, to sort of... I mean, really what you see is what you get with this one, and it's, it's just a sort of a good, straight, honest car. It is what it is. So it hasn't been restored. Um, it's, uh, it doesn't necessarily need restoring, but, but, you know, some people like to just drive them as they are. So it's so so, original leather and everything in there? Yeah, original leather. Yeah, yeah. Mechanical fuel injected car. Yeah, so it's a lovely little car. So where would the E stand in the procession of Porsche cars at the time? Um, so the, the S was the, the fast, the fast model, if you like, and then there was the E, um, and then there was a T and an L. But the E's probably they're just really lovely drivable. Slightly smaller camshafts. Slightly less power, same torque, but just a really lovely car. Yeah. This one's a 2.2. Two. Oh, two. Yes, yeah, right. so this is an earlier one, slightly oh, earlier. What, so yeah. what year would you 70, 71, 72. Oh, wow. Oh, OK. And over the years, I would imagine people have been tempted to upgrade engines on uh, from the 2.2. <laughs> so, so, so when the cars are newer, or certainly 70s, 80s, oh. 90s, we did a lot of, um, well, the world did a lot of upgrading. So the cars were changed from what they were, whether it be suspension, the look of the cars, body, engines. And really in the last oh, probably 10 years or so, there's been a real push back to standard. So all the modifications that we've done, we're, we're actually reversing now and um, taking a lot of them back to factory standard. Yeah. And is that a fair part, part of the business? Yes, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's another early one here, which is a left-hand drive American car. And that's Let's try and have a look over there. Being slowly being brought back. But before that, three things you ought to know about the Targa. Neither a cabriolet nor a coupe, neither a hardtop nor a saloon, but something completely new. The first safety cabriolet in the world with a fixed safety or roll bar. That's the blurb from Porsche at the 1965 Frankfurt show, where the Targa was introduced in response to the US market's increased safety requirements for open top cars sold in the country. But did you know that two cars can lay claim to beating Porsche to the configuration in the years prior to the Targa? Triumph offered the TR4 with a unique hardtop arrangement, widely known as the Surrey Top. Like later Targas, it had a fixed glass rear window, and an integral roll bar and detachable centre panel. This is five years before the Targa was on the roads. And while Porsche were merely unveiling the Targa at Frankfurt, Toyota had already begun sales of the Sports 800 to the Japanese marketplace. It too had the removable Targa top that will become synonymous with the 911 in the years to come. The name Targa is derived from the Targa Florio race on Sicily, where Porsche saw success in the 1950s. And then came we on our house the Targa Florio. And then we said, Targa Florio, and one of my colleagues said, no, they say the Kunden Flori. And then I said, moment, let's do the Florio away. And so is the name Targa then instant. <laughs> Not wissen. That's auf Italienisch Targa Schutzschild hat. Porsche dropped the idea of a roll bar for their 1995 993 Targa. Instead, they went down the route of what I suppose we'd call now a panoramic roof. The Targa roll bar then returned on the 2011 991. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure when it was imported, but it certainly sat still for a long time. So it needs a fair bit of work to bring it back to rest, you know, to sort of roadworthy condition. And then once it's drivable, I think the owner will see how far he wants to go, or you know, whether she falls in love with it. And, yeah, yeah. It's got a yeah, well, patina's pretty. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's all on it. <laughs> it's all there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean it's the sort of car that you know really could do with a restoration to bring it back to its full. Is it not of the kind that you would uh, leave it as is, or, uh, or it, do you reckon? Actually, yes, is that it? It really it's been repainted, but not. Yeah, that's no correct. It's actually had a colour change. Right. Yeah. Um, you, you can actually see some under the guard. There's sort of a goldy colour on the other guard. I think there's more of a. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, 
more evidence to its original colour. So that's right. I mean, look, it just depends what people want. Some people just simply want to drive them, in which case, as long as it's roadworthy, it, it doesn't need anything. Um, and then there are some people that you know want to bring it back to original. Yeah, there's a bit of colour in there. It sort of shows a little bit more that sort of no. golden colour. Um, so this is <coughs> brakes, wheel bearings, all sorts of various suspension work. Um, some lights, uh, being American, the, the headlights have to, have to be changed to make them legal for, for our standards. And um, Australian, is that, do they more uh, line to European or? Perfectly, right. perfectly aligned to European. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, oh, it's going to be another crack, another Targa, beautiful. Yes, another Targa. <laughs> <laughs> How do you go height-wise in, uh, in a coupe? And um, so I'm, I, I like, well, targets are easy, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. no sunroof is good, mm -hmm. so there's that sort of inch more headroom with a no sunroof car, um, older seats that have been squished down, <laughs> but yeah, no, all the cars that, that I've um, raced and that sort of stuff, I end up modifying the seating position so it suits me, yeah, which is as low as it can go, yeah, yeah. Okay, next up. So in here is where um, just rebuild engines and gearboxes. Uh, no automatics, just manuals. Um, yeah, and at the moment there's a uh, this is a three liter SC from Japan. Um, slightly different specification, but fundamentally just an SC three liter. Where are you at? in putting it back together and what's the uh, issue? Waiting for parts. <laughs> seems to be a common <laughs> Wait, theme. Waiting for parts, yeah, even small parts. It's the stuff that, you know, you'd imagine that would be on the shelf. Yeah, we're having real problems with, and it's a worldwide problem. So, um, yeah. But parts-wise is, uh, they're not hard to come by for that? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. no, no. No, not at all. No, everything's available, and if it's not available from the factory, there are some fantastic aftermarket alternatives, so right from rod bolts to bearings to chains to yeah, everything. Okay, familiar guards red. Yes, very familiar guards red. This one's um, in 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 a long, steady state of restoration repair, <laughs> if you like. Um, so it's actually an ex. Uh, car that we sort of club raced, um, so it's the fundamentals are, are true, tried and tested. Um, it's really, yeah, it's a good, really good, lovely car. What model no is it? No sunroof. It's an SC. It was built um, in '77, so it was the crossover from a three-liter Carrera to an SC, and it's a bit of a strange car. This particular car, in that some of the components and filters were set from '77, and some were SC. So oh, it's, right. it's sort of a, it's, it's a... Yeah. From factory? From factory, yeah, yeah. yeah. So but that was, that was, Porsche did a bit of that, where they, um, they were obviously left with uh, run-on parts, whether they be trim or individual parts, which still work because the specification is very similar, that they just sort of let drift into the next model year. Right. right. Um, not anymore, but certainly back in those days sure. they did. Yeah. So it's a bit of a, this one's a bit of a... Um, a sorry state in that it's got fuels being contaminated and so it's got through the whole fuel system. The fundamentals are really good on this, it's right. just the fuel system right. that's okay. just got um, dirt in it from, gotcha. a, from a service station. Okay. As it turns out, suddenly good, it was, it was good and then suddenly bad, just this fire carry on and it's just full of dirt. Yeah, so it's really, wow. really unfortunate. Yeah. Um, it's uh, another one that's very, well presumably if it's a club racer, it's not, it's not it, interior is it or it, it well it is a little bit of you can see it's got no rear seats and it's got oh, yeah. little roll cage pads um, for where it had a roll cage and things like that but it's just yeah it's a lovely little car it still yeah. needs bits of here and there but yeah so are many Australian cars reaching that hundred thousand mile mark where they need a top-end rebuild um, yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in short yes um, it, it look it's because of the use changes so much, you can have cars that have done that 100,000 miles, 160,000 kilometres um, that have been driven long distances, which actually fare very, very well. It's the cars that really get a lot of heat cycles that sit in traffic and get very, very hot. Or, and again, um, a lot of cold starts is really what sort of kills the cars or 
makes them wear faster. There's that old adage that 80% of the cars wear happens in its first five minutes, and it's, it's so true. Right. Is so, it um, particular with Porsches in that regard? Um, well, being air-cooled, yes. Yeah, yeah, probably they suffer a little bit more. Um, but they just suffer from valve guide, the top end wear, really. That's probably the, the first sign that they're going. The bottom ends are normally good for 250,000 kilometres. Um, and, and even when I say good, they're good well beyond that if they've been serviced, maintained. But at, at that stage, if you were pulling one down, you'd definitely strip it down to nothing. And what, but, yeah. What's the biggest, uh, biggest mile 911 you've dealt with? Biggest oh, wars, kilometres. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, one that always comes to mind for me was a, a 3.2 Carrera, so an 84 3.2 Carrera that had done, the last time we saw it, had done 380,000 kilometres, driven from here to the Northern Territory, basically all around Australia, driven extremely hard, and at 380,000 kilometres, the car was crisp, beautiful, not an oil leak, but again, because it had done lots of kilometres, but at warm, you know, once it's warm, it had been driven at high speed and it had been run and looked after and it was just like a newer car. You know, yeah. I've seen cars that have done 80,000 kilometres that were 10 times worse in condition. That's it for now from Ben and the team at Veltmeister. It's been a while since I shot this video as Ben's been waiting on parts to rebuild the engine for this yellow car, which is itself going to be the subject of a backdate to its SC roots. I'd wanted to show at least part of that in this video, but, but it'll have to wait until the next one when, when you'll be able to see the rest of what's in and hear about Ben's plans for his own SC Resto mod. But I know when Singer first came out, and I looked at myself, well, I've been, doing, I've been building them for 20 years. What are you talking, you know, what's so special of this mob? <laughs>